Hi there, good evening. Um, welcome to our business training tonight. I did switch it up a little bit. Um, I know I had made some comments on what I was going to, oh, Yuli needs the link. I guess she didn't get the link. Give me one second, boy, oh boy. Um, so what I'm gonna share with you tonight is, um, some of you know that Alan and Elise were like my mentors and um, were really inspirational for me. And I have to say that a lot of, all, you guys might remember this, but Al used to have a quote at the end of every meeting. And he would always quote um, something from Bob Proctor. Do you guys remember that? And at first, I never really knew who Bob Proctor was. He would always just do this quote, say this quote. And um, I have to say that I, I didn't really get it right away. And then probably, I would say probably a year into, you know, building my business and, and uh, everything growing and, and, and achieving some, some of the goals that I had set. And I can't remember what happened, but Bob Proctor was attending a local event in Toronto. And Al had some extra tickets. And I think Cindy and I went, if I'm not mistaken. And I met him for the first time. And at first I thought, oh, he just wants to sell us stuff, right? <laughs> and sure enough, at the end of his stuff, um, he did. He, there was a program that you can purchase. And Lori Bateau was with me at that one. And she bought the program. And she shared it with me, which was so nice. Anyways, um, I have those cassette tapes. Okay, uh, I remember, um, anyways, it, it did have an impact um, in my business. It made me more aware and understanding the importance of putting good things in so that you would attract more good in your life. Um, so I'm going to play just a little bit of this. And this is, a, I'm going to send you the whole link so you can watch it all. But many of you know that he's passed, he passed away. And... It's hard to believe that Bob is no longer with us. He also played a big role in, you know, the, the, the secret teachings that I send you guys every, almost every day when I remember. Yeah. This, almost Bob, every day. Bob, Bob Proctor from The Secret. He is like, yeah. So, and it's funny because everything he, he's taught is, isn't anything new. He's pulled stuff from Think and Grow Rich, okay, which is a very hard book to read. Um, and he does talk quite a bit about it in this little little um, presentation that I'm only going to play maybe 15 minutes of it. And then we're going to dive in and listen to a little bit of Eric Worre and, and have and talk about some of the language and the importance of, of putting these good things in. OK, so let me just play this. I don't know anyone else that has done as much as them from a generic training perspective. There's been many within the industry, within a company, that have done a phenomenal job, but from outside, um, as generic trainers, they've done an incredible job. I want to uh, spend my time talking to you about results. The results we get uh, are nothing but an expression of what's going on inside. And if you think about it, this is what the worries have really focused on in helping you change your results. So as we go through here and talk about results, I want you to really think how do results happen? Do they just happen? I don't think so. And yet, there's a very large group of people, the way they live, you would think that that's the way it is. It just happens. 
But results don't just happen. Results are the physical expression of what's going on inside. And if we let the outside control what's going on in the inside, there's going to be nothing but a repeat performance. Okay, get this going. There we go. I have found that results always tell the truth. You can't fudge it. You can't uh, kid anybody. The results always tell the truth. We can blame everything under the sun. We can point our finger, do whatever we want. But the results tell us what's going on. And if we don't like the results, we're the only one that can change them. I want to suggest that you take a real close look at your results. As we go through this, then ask yourself, you know, how do my results happen? I spent nine and a half years seriously studying, trying to figure out how we get the results we get. Now, I've spent over 50 years working at this, but really focusing on, uh, on what was going on, it was about nine and a half years. I'm having trouble with the flipper here. It's probably the computer. Now, I think everyone wants to permanently improve their results. I don't think there's any exceptions to that. We will frequently see our results getting better and then they go back again. We go ahead and then we flatten out again. If we're going to change the results we're getting, it's absolutely essential we change our paradigm. And if we don't change the paradigm, nothing happens. Any change is temporary. It goes right back to where it was. I've been looking at this for many, many years. I started studying this book over 50 years ago. Hill said there's a difference between wishing for a thing and being ready to achieve it. No one is ready for a thing until they believe that they can acquire it. The state of mind must be belief and not mere hope or wish. Now he said, open-mindedness is essential to belief. Closed minds will not inspire faith, courage, or belief. Then he says something that I think is really encouraging. He said, remember, no more effort is required to aim high in life, to demand abundance and prosperity than is required to accept misery and poverty. Now, it's very clear that there's many people don't know that. They struggle and they struggle and they struggle all the way through their life. When with a lot less effort, they could have got all the results they wanted. Paradigms are an interesting subject. I have, uh, when I first come around, it was, there's fads, and you get in, there was management by objectives, the MBO programs. And that was very, very big. And everybody was studying it. Corporations were focused on it. Management by objectives. But it didn't last. I remember working for the Metropolitan Life Insurance Company. I was doing programs for their company and they spent millions of dollars bringing in MBA grads and they were gonna put them into management. It was a miserable failure. Then we get into transactional analysis. 
I'm okay, you're okay. And you could really get into that, but I have found if we don't go right back to the basics, what's going on inside that causes us to behave as we behave and get the results we get, nothing's gonna change. We've really got to understand that. And so, as I go through the time this morning, and I want to thank Eric for giving you as much time as he has, I want to try and give you some insight into that. I, uh, I am not a motivational speaker. I have never even thought of myself as a speaker. I've never belonged to a speaker's association. If anything, I see myself more as a teacher and a researcher. I just love studying this subject of why we do what we do and why we don't do many of the things that we want to do. And so in the time that I've got this morning, I want to go into that. And rather than get caught up in the dynamics of this enormous audience, mentally really listen carefully and think. Do you know, you and I are the only creature on the planet, so far as we know, that can get outside of ourselves and look back at ourselves like a stranger might. We can get outside and look back at our behavior and what we're doing. None of the other little creatures, so far as we know, can do that. All of the other little creatures on the planet are completely at home in their environment, they blend in. You and I are the only creature on the entire planet that's totally disoriented in our environment. <laughs> and that's because God gave us the ability to create our own environment. Now do you know, we can go all the way through school, we can go all the way through the most prestigious universities in the world and never really learn the truth about ourselves. Never really touch base with the creative faculties that separates us from all the rest of life. I stumbled on this, but I think I stumbled on it because I had such phenomenal mentors and they kept leading me down a different path. Now, Paradigm's an interesting word. It's a mental program that has almost exclusive control over our habitual behavior. Now think of that. It's a mental program that has almost exclusive control over our behavior, our habitual behavior, and almost all of our behavior is habitual. Now think about that really carefully. The paradigm is a mental program that has almost exclusive control over our habitual behavior and almost all of our behavior is habitual. You will have people in your organization that you recognize has tremendous talent and you sit down and you talk to them and they answer you and you swear to God that they got the message. <laughs> and nothing happens. And your spouse will say, I thought you talked to them. <laughs> we'll say, I did. <laughs> well, they're not doing anything. I know. <laughs> you see, the part of the mind that you talk to is not the part of the mind that controls the behavior. There's two parts. One is the intellectual part. That's the part that we communicate with intellectually. But that's not the part that controls the behavior. You could be absolutely brilliant and have a terrible paradigm. There's no point in struggling trying to change the results. I think Buckminster Fuller put that very well. He said, you never change things by fighting existing reality. And you know something? There's a lot of network marketers that are fighting existing reality. But of course, there's a lot of people in life that are fighting existing reality. 
He said, to change things, you've got to build a new program that makes the existing program obsolete. I've given all these slides to the worries and if you're trying to copy them, they can give them to you somehow or another. You never change things by fighting existing reality. Let that sink in real deep because many times you and I are fighting existing reality. We've got to build a new model, but we have to learn how to build the new model. And we have to get the right information for building the new model. Then we have to know how to install the new model. And when we do that, things start to move in the right direction. I had a man many years ago sat down with me. In fact, it'll be 55 years ago next week. And he said, Bob, you can create your own economy. Well, I know I didn't understand what he meant. I just know I didn't. That was 54 years ago on the 21st of October. And he gave me this book. Reading this book called a, caused a huge improvement in my results and in the direction of my life. I have never stopped reading it. It's Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. I have been reading this every day for over a half a century. Do you know, I think it was Hubbard said, when you read a good book through the second time, you don't see something in it you didn't see before. You see something in yourself that wasn't there before. You see? That's what these meetings do. Sometimes a person will say, well, you know, I've been to them and it just it doesn't, doesn't do anything for me. You never know. People tried and tried and tried to help me. And I was going in the wrong direction. I never heard what they were saying. But then one day, one man made a big difference, made a huge difference. Do you know that this GoPro event can cause a huge improvement in your life and in your, res in your results? And it could start today. You see, the strange part about this is it's when the change happens, it's, it's like instantaneous. It's it's so strange how it works. Now the key here, I committed to study this material every day and then follow proven direction. Ray Stanford was the man's name. And he said, Bob, if you do exactly what I tell you. Now God only knows why I did, but I did. I was 26. I'd quit school and I was 16. I had nothing to offer the world. And so I didn't get much back. I went in the Navy and spent a few years there and then I worked in bars and in factories. And I was sitting in a fire hall in Toronto when he sat down and talked to me. And if we don't follow the direction of someone that is demonstrated by results, they know what they're talking about. The odds of us winning are pretty slim. Now, I understand this week, there were a few hundred people in here, there's six and seven figure incomes. They know what they're talking about insofar as earning money, six or seven figure income. So it would only make good sense to sit down with one of them and say, tell me exactly what to do. 
and then go and do it. That's what I did. I don't know why I did, but I did. And you know what it takes? He told me, he said, it takes discipline. And I was in the, I was in the Navy and they had me running around the parade square with a rifle over my head for hours. And that was called discipline. It was actually punishment. And, and, and the, the, the duty disciplinary officer seemed to have a sadistic streak in him. He, he just enjoyed doing it. And I, for a long time, I thought that was discipline. Discipline is when we give ourselves a command and then follow it. All right. What do you think about that? I think that was pretty powerful. And again, I have to, you know, I, I just give gratitude to Bob. I know he played a really big role in the success I had in my business. Um, and some of you know my story. I mean, it didn't happen. It looks like it happened easy, but it didn't. I had to be disciplined, right? A lot of people think, oh, Nana's making the six-figure income. She's, you know, making all this money. She lives in the country. And man, when I was working 10-hour days, eight days in a row, quarter of my days off, I was exhausted. And I still went to every single meeting. That's where the discipline came in. When Al told me to write my goals down or read them aloud and share them at meetings, I did it because I had this ultimate goal and I wanted to make a change in my life. So it takes discipline. Okay. So if you are struggling in any way and you're not at the level that you want to be, you might have to make some changes to your paradigm, the way you think, um, you know, your daily habits, right? You got to look at your habits. What are you doing every day? Right. Look at Shelly Sheridan, the example she did on the challenge right? She made a goal and she, people are watching her. They're, she's helping other people realize that if you want to achieve something, you got to go above and beyond and just do it. Okay. If you want people to follow you and be a part of your team, they're going to look at you and say, I want to be just like you. If they're looking at you now and they're not saying that, then you might have to make some changes to your attitude, to how you act, um, you know, to maybe just things in a day, on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's so important. People want to be around positive, like-minded, happy, healthy people. <laughs> okay. So the, those are some of the things that I, I, my takeaway from Bob, has anybody else followed Bob in that? Maybe you want to share before we go on to Eric Worry. Anybody want to share? Does anybody follow Bob or any quotes from Bob? I know Joan, you've done a lot with a secret. We've even watched the movie a couple of times. Amazing movie. If you haven't had a chance to watch The Secret, it's, it's on Netflix. Yeah, he was part of Mary's team. He, he was a guest. He was oh. A guest. He, they both collaborate. Yeah. Excellent. I, I did not know that. Thank you, Joan. So that, and you, you know what? And, and it's interesting that you say that because you did the program. And after that, was it for a year? What a difference in, in you, in your personal growth, personal development, and your business just went boom, right? Yeah. Okay, so these are the things that we need to do if we want to make some changes and want more, what do you say, to, 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 um, to achieve your, the financial success and the growth in your business. Okay, anybody else before we go on to Eric? Okay, and hopefully this will work. It's, it's a little diff different when I'm doing the two different oh, Hang on. Um, you probably. Oh, there it is. Okay, hopefully this will work. Here we go. Welcome to Network Marketing Pro. My name is Eric Worry, and this week we're going to talk about five steps to unlimited prospects. I remember when I first got involved in the network marketing profession, I was so stressed out about asking myself the question every single day, do I know anybody? Do I know anyone? And, and when I, since I was so young, just 22 years old, most of the people I knew didn't have any money. They were 
not really thinking entrepreneurially. They are thinking about trying to get to the weekend. And because of that, I was, I made my little written list and I went out to my list with a lot of anxiety and not much skill. And I started to drain the list. My best prospects said no. And I started to go down the list. And as my list got smaller and smaller, my anxiety got higher and higher. You see, what I thought in network marketing was that the number of people you had on the list and the quality of those people that you had the day you joined, in other words, this, this database of relationships, that was gonna determine your success or failure in network marketing. If you had a good list, a good group of people, good contact, good relationships, then you're gonna have a huge business in network marketing. And if you didn't, or you lived in a small town, or you just, you know, you hadn't developed that skill yet, you weren't that social, maybe you're more introverted like me, if you didn't have that big list of contacts, then your chances were slim to none. And what I've learned over the course of the last 28 years is that's not true. Successful people in network marketing look at finding prospects as a skill. Most of the people that they involve in their business, they met after they got involved in network marketing. As a matter of fact, ask your leadership, people who are high earners in your company, how many of the people that they personally have sponsored into their business how many of them did they know prior to getting involved in the business? And how many did they meet after they got involved in the business? What you're going to see is the vast majority of those people involved and, and sponsored into network marketing were met after that person got involved with their company. In other words, their past list was not the key to their success. It was their skill moving forward at developing their prospect list, the developing relationships with those people that mattered the most. So today I'm going to give you five steps so you have unlimited prospects, kind of a short course on never running out of people to talk to about your network marketing product or opportunity, okay? The first step on the list, which you may have already started, is to create what I like to call an active candidate list. This isn't just a list of 20 people you scrawl on the, on the back of an envelope. This isn't 40 people that you write down on your legal pad. This is every single person you know or have ever met that you could ever remember as if you're getting paid $1,000 a person for every person you were putting on the list. How many could you put on the list? And there's lots of strategies to, to jog your memory and to remember the people that you know and start there, okay? So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna empty our minds out on paper as best we can. We're gonna take it out of our mind and we're gonna put it on paper as best we can and as comprehensive as we can. And I've got a free resource for you today. I created it a few years back. It's called The Ultimate Memory Jogger. It's a workbook that I'm gonna give you a link to download for free. Um, and in that workbook, I give you some training on finding prospects. I give you some scripts on what to say when you talk to prospects. And I give you a huge list of categories to help jog your memory and think about the resources that you have and the people that you could add to your list, okay? Um, the link for that is networkmarketingpro.com forward slash memory jogger networkmarketingpro.com forward slash memory jogger. It's my gift to you. I hope you take advantage of it because it's really a great tool. You can download it, use that as a resource to start with step number one, um, creating that active candidate list. And the reason why I call it active is step number two is to constantly expand your list. What do I mean by that? It's not just who you know today. It's who you're going to meet. It's who you're going to run into. It's who you're going to connect with. Constantly expand your list. Set yourself up to a discipline. And here's one of the best disciplines I can, as far as strategies I can give you. Two a day. Every day, make sure you add at least two people to your active candidate list. You might meet those people online. You might find those people from some social group. You might remember somebody. You might bump into somebody walking the dog. You might 
somebody might give you great service at a restaurant, wherever it is, friend them up, connect with them on Facebook, whatever. They, do, they don't have to be prospected the moment that you meet them. They just have to build a connection and start to build a relationship. So you can start to build trust, you can start to build belief, and then when the time is appropriate, you can share with them your product and your opportunity. So step number two is to constantly expand your list, okay? Step number three is to raise your awareness. What do I mean by that? What I mean is this, when you get out there in the world, a lot of times we run into so many people that could be incredible for our business, would be natural product users for our product or service, and we don't even see them. Our awareness is so, so shut down, our social circle is so locked that we're not even aware that the person who gave us good service at the restaurant, we didn't even look them in the eye. We didn't even find out what their name was. You know, the person gave us great service selling us shoes. We didn't even say hello. We just barked some orders. We got our shoes and we left. We're constantly presented with opportunities to make a connection with other people in the world. And it's your job to raise your awareness, expand your mind, and get outside of your tiny little circle of five or six friends and your family members and start to uh, uh, expand your awareness. It's really a key skill set. You see the top earners in network marketing, they're expanding their awareness. They're always looking for opportunities. It's not they're, they're not predators. They're not handing out business cards at funerals, right? They're constantly raising their awareness to connect with another human being and build a relationship. And not even so much because they, they, they want to get that person to join their business, because they collect friends. You know, they live a big life. And as an introverted person, I've been an introverted person my whole life. As an introverted person, I have to remind myself to get out of my own head and to be a citizen of the world. I have to remind myself to raise my awareness that there are other people that I could easily make a connection with and hopefully help um, and serve in some way. So step number three is raise your awareness. So the first three steps so far, build an active candidate list, constantly expand that list, and raise your awareness. Now, step number four is another mental mindset. And that's as you are looking at the world, as you're building your list, as you're expanding it, as you're raising your awareness, don't ever prejudge. It's so easy for us to say, this person is not a candidate because they don't have any money. This person is not a candidate because they have too much money, they're too successful. This person's not a candidate because they're busy doing other things. This person wouldn't want the product uh, because whatever reason you think. You don't know what's going on in another person's world. You just don't. You could have met people you could have talked to people already in the last seven days that you have totally pushed outside of your circle of possibility of even being a prospect. And yet, they're, they may be praying tonight, searching for an opportunity to be able to latch onto and sink their teeth into and go to work with. You don't know. You don't know if that rich person is bored out of their mind. You don't know if that person who works in the corporate world is looking for a challenge. You don't know if, if a person who looks successful is, is stressing out about not being able to pay for one of their kids' college. You don't know what's going on. You can't see inside of the heart and mind of another person. You have to give them an opportunity. So it's really important that you never prejudge. I have a cousin, and his name is Steve, and he was a pastor, he was a preacher. He traveled around and he was preaching. And I never even put him and his, he, he had some brothers that were involved in, in ministry work. And so all these cousins, I never even thought, not once, to talk to them about network marketing. Back in the early days, never even thought about it. Never even crossed my mind. Well, guess what? They were looking for opportunity. They were tired of being on the road and doing what they were doing. Even though they loved the ministry, they were tired of that particular aspect of what, what was going on in their life. And they joined a network marketing company without me even knowing. And guess what? Today, they're a top 10 earner in a billion dollar company. 
and I never even, it never, I, I totally and completely prejudged them. And how much do you think that cost in income and, and, and possibility for just for me? I promise you, you have a situation like that. You have somebody you think is too cool for this, somebody you think is too successful for this, or not successful enough. You never know when a person is ready to make a change and is looking for opportunity. Our job is not to convince people to do things. Our job is to give people an opportunity. And you can't give people an opportunity if you prejudge what they're going to do with it. So that's number four. Number five is, is really important, especially for if you're a person who has your little routines. Number five is network on purpose. Network on purpose. That means join some new groups, expand your horizons, join a networking group in your local community and serve people within that community and get to know people. Volunteer for charities and causes. You can't believe the number of people and influential, powerful people that you can meet by volunteering and helping raise money for charities, et cetera, working in, within your local community. If you have hobbies, expand those hobbies. Join some social groups. Join a new health club. Get out of your house and get connected with your local community and meet the people there. Connect with the people there. Network with the people there. You'll build friendships, you'll build relationships, and you will have natural ability to be able to talk to them about your product or opportunity. If you don't get out of your house, if you just sit there all day long, it's difficult to be a citizen of the world. Get out there and network on purpose. So what are our five strategies? Strategy number one is start today with an active candidate list. I hope at the end of this video you download the special um, Ultimate Memory Jogger workbook that will help you create that active candidate list and help you with this process. There's great training in there. It's absolutely free. My gift to you, networkmarketingpro.com forward slash memory jogger. Okay? So your active candidate list is number one. Number two, constantly expand that list. Number three, raise your awareness. Pay attention to what's going on in the world. Number four, never prejudge as you're building your prospect um, pool of people to talk to. Never prejudge. That's not your job. And number five, network on purpose. Get out there. All right. I actually did download that, um, that book and I'm just going to bring it up. There I go. This really does <laughs> have that over. magic. It has that possibility oh, right, to change so many lives in this room. <laughs> you have to go back and find that video and pause it. Close, close the window or something. Your mind I try with not great to thoughts. End this. I can't get it off. Oh, to hang on. Share, share your screen or something. Oh, I, Let's see. I got it. I got it. <laughs> got it? I okay. I closed it. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> no, it's like going searching oh, for something. <laughs> I thought when I shut it down, it disappeared completely. But it, uh, so here's a memory logger. Um, I did download it. And I have to say, I mean, the reason why I'm really excited about this is I was getting really comfortable working behind my desk, just like the way he's saying, because it's been working like since COVID and, you know, but there's no excuse now. And a perfect example is, um, I was, I'm here at my mom, we hired somebody uh, to do um, a bath fitters, people to come in and, and, and do some work here. And this young man came in and I was working at my computer and he went in and started to do some work. And, and after I listened to these two different presentations, I thought I got to, to have a conversation with this young man. And, and part of it was um, complimenting. And I have to, to say that he was incredible. He brought mats down and he covered all the stairs and, and the walkway to the bathroom so that when you walked into the house, there was no dirt on the floor, on the carpets. He, he was meticulous. Um, there was a problem with the actual form and there's um, a defect. So they can't finish the shower. He felt so bad. He couldn't even tell us that there was something wrong. He drove back. He's from Stony Creek, drove back to his company in Hamilton, 
told his boss, look, I cannot finish that job. There's a defect in that floor. Um, but the problem is it has to be redone and remodeled. And it's going to take probably not until March. And we have no shower now because he literally ripped it all out. So he felt so bad. And you know what? When he came back today to talk to me about this, all I said to him, I said, you know what, Sean? I said, if that's all we have to worry about is not having two showers in, in a home when there's so many people that are having serious challenges in their life right now, that so I think I can make do with not having a shower downstairs. I said, I, he goes, I felt so bad. I said, and I really appreciate your workmanship. I appreciate how amazingly clean you were coming into this home and 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 putting and he just looked at me and he smiled he, he had the mask on and I said take your mask off I said I want to see your smile and and then he said you know what I've just come to get the tools and I'll come back in March I said no problem my mom was a little anxious she was we were like she was a little upset right this is her bathroom and and he's long story short while he was in there I thought I got to talk to him about new life. This guy will be perfect in this business. My mom said, oh, no, don't, don't. He's busy. He's busy. I said, no. I said, I'm going to give him sample packs and I'm going to get him on board. So I just asked him. I said, Sean, I said, you know what? Your workmanship is so awesome. I said, um, I know you have a girlfriend. So I did find out he's a girlfriend. And um, I said, have you, have you ever thought of doing something else like part-time you know, to generate extra income that wouldn't interfere with what you're actually doing. I know you love what you're doing. You're awesome at what you do. And I said, like, do you like health and wellness? Do you believe in, in whole food supplements? And like, do you work out? We just started having conversation questions and he was answering me and we went back and forth and I gave him sample packs. Um, I sent them the links. He's very interested. So, and I almost didn't say anything. I was this close to not saying anything. So. I, and it's funny, what made me do that was getting out of my comfort zone and spending time on listening to Bob Proctor, spending time listening to Eric Worre. So even though I've been in this business for 30 years, I still need constant reminding. Okay, just remember that. We need that constant reminding. And even like even Bob said, right, are you going to meetings? Are, are you surrounding yourself with people? Talk to people that are making six-figure incomes. What are they doing? Okay. Um, so this is this is such such key. So this is a great memory jogger. I actually um, went through this very quickly. Uh, I would highly recommend that you download this and just read through it. But what I really really liked was um, the categories. Like it it reminded me of people in my life and he goes into a lot of detail and it'll just re remind you of people that you knew um, from your past um, and then um, I loved the actual scripts we have some scripts in the getting started guide but these scripts are similar but there's way more so I highly recommend that you download this I think the scripts are at the very so he gives you all these pages to download uh, again for free I, I thought there's got to be a catch right but nope it's free you can download it it's all here whether you you lose use these sheets or you have your own excel program or your own uh forms but um anyways they're all here and um i'm just oh yeah here we go where is it oh yeah so i i, I this is one part of members compliment the prospect you know, you've been wildly successful and always respected the way you've done business. So just some key words that you that you can. So these are um, uh, simple for your warm markets. Okay, compliments that you can give your people that you know. You have an amazing mind for business and can see things other people don't see. So again, there's different different things that you can say. Um, and then cold market. Um, you are super sharp. Can I ask what you do for a living? Right. Something as simple as that. And with with Sean, I just said to him, I said, your workmanship is incredible for a young man. I said, what you've done here in such a short time. I said, I'm in awe. And he goes, oh, I, I said, oh, and I said, did you go to school to learn how to do this? He goes, oh, yeah. And, and kind of explained the schooling thing. Right. So I found out that he owns a home with this girlfriend. They bought in Stony Creek. He says, there's, and I said, wow, I said, you must be so um, happy that you got in, in the housing market. He goes, absolutely, because goes, there's no way I can get in the housing market now, <laughs> right? So I know he's, he knows 
you know, that the importance of, of income. He goes, none of my friends, none of them got in the market and there's no way they'll be able to ever buy, afford a home. Right. So these are the little things that I found out about him. And I think in just like five minutes that I talked to him. Okay. Uh, anyways, let me get some feedback from you guys. Um, was this helpful? Very. Excellent. Yeah, absolutely. And you can watch that Bob Proctor. I, I can, it's on YouTube. Um, they did it in, in the honor of him since he's passed. So you can go back and watch that whole, uh, I only played, I think, 15 minutes of it um, today. But Eric Worre, I mean, if you, most of you have GoPro, the book. Um, excellent book. I know, Yuli, you're using it part of your um, success team. Um, I have to say that is for network marketing and growing your business, definitely one of the best tools out there for you to grow your business. Okay, anything else? Any feedback? We have about 10 minutes before we head over to the other, to the other side, like I say. <laughs> Anybody at all? Joan, you're thinking. No? I guess it's the list. I think I have to go back to my list. My list is flimsy compared to what he's I know. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta go to the list. Me too. Like when I looked at the categories, oh my God, like we have, I think, one little list of categories. He had, I think, four pages of categories. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. So definitely go back to your list and and just, you know, just, and and, and I love the, the fact of him saying, just keep adding every day to people. I haven't been doing that. That's what made me add Sean today. I thought, okay, I gotta find two people. I'm not going anywhere. But okay, Sean, boom, you're it. You're you're my, you're my one person, Heather. So I went on a walk today around Sturgeon Point. I saw three people. And one person I stopped to chat, and he was telling me about the price of gas because he just got back and he actually goes and takes his gas cans and fills them up and everything. And he's a painter. So we were talking about the economy. He said, oh, the economy is just going to pieces and all this. He has to travel to where his work is because he's a painter. I said, yeah, but what about if you could earn some money while you're painting, right? And so we got talking about that. And uh, so I said, sure. How about earning some extra money to pay for gas and groceries? Inflation is terrible right now. Like it's, it's, I said, our business actually grows during recessions. And inflation so um so he's interested i saw three people he's one the other two people i invited to some zoom calls and there you go it's networking on purpose and raising awareness in a way of like what can i offer like do these people know what i do i've known them for years but i'm i'm showing them some of the other things that i can offer excellent thank you that was perfect grand finale for tonight well Awesome. Very well said, Heather. Thank you. Anybody else? Violet, you're smiling, girl. You're, 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 you're soaking this all in. I know I am. Yeah. And I'm so slowly getting we into my family. Her, yeah, we introduced her niece today. And um, you know, I think the wheels are turning, spinning. She's a young mom, three-year-old daughter, you know, interested in health and nutrition, but I can see the the interest in the business so i think yeah you're she's going to be an awesome yeah when she makes that decision violet she's going to yeah. be awesome i can just see the passion there so yeah she loves the shakes i gave some samples and while i was in uh, there you know in their house for three days she was like every day having one yeah that's <laughs> awesome yeah. yes Leonie. I think, uh, well, the stuff about creating the list, every single person in your life, I think that's something I have to work on. But um, I think we have to be very intentional. And I try to be intentional. For example, the other day I was at work and this um, one of the managers, she was so happy. She's, oh, I'm pregnant. As soon as she said that, my brain went to salmon oil plot, sorry. <laughs> and and uh, so I'm very intentional. It's, it's always the back of my head there. And so I sent her some articles. She said, yeah, I'd be, I'd be happy to, to, to receive some information and all that. So that's one. And then the other day when I went on that, um, on Orangeville, they had that, you know, support the trackers. Yeah. I was very intentional. I brought a whole stack of uh, business cards in my little backpack. And I'm talking to people and, and, and not only intentional as into, you know, um, 
get a relationship and foster relationship and, and talk, right? And we have already the common commonality in that what we're doing and what we believe in. So, you know, I have like about three or four names. So we're starting to chat, right? I, I'm not going to just put it right in their face, but you develop a relationship yeah. and you go there. So I'm always very intentional. I always bring my stuff there. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So, yeah. yeah. And that's what I think Eric was saying is just, so it's, it's just a, you, you might not always talk about your business or talk about your product right away, but just the intention of meeting people and connecting with people. And if the conversation goes that way, great. If it doesn't, that's okay. As long as you're out trying to connect and meeting people, and adding people to your, to your network, right? So really important. Yeah. Awesome. Going over. Sorry, guys. Okay. So thank you. Okay, I'm, I'm going to stop the recording. So thank you all for joining. I'll just stop the recording. Uh, where is it here?